is Christine Morris, and today we're going to take our first look at SolidWorks PCB and the P PCB Connect tools. SolidWorks has announced a new product called SolidWorks PCB that is powered by Altium. It is a full electronic design tool that allows for true collaboration between mechanical and electrical engineers. It allows for real-time 3D checking for fitment and form factor prior to producing any products. You may ask, how did this tool help me? Let's take a moment to think about how much money you or your company has spent on respins of printed circuit boards. How many times have you designed a mechanical enclosure or a chassis, sent it over to your electrical engineer and found that it doesn't fit properly with their PCB? Count the number of times you imported a design file to find that it's the wrong one. We can eliminate that issue permanently. The new ECAD MCAD collaboration supports bi-directional exchange of parasolid data, the native format of SolidWorks. When the data is rebuilt in SolidWorks, it shows a complete assembly tree and allows for edits to be made in the SolidWorks tools as if it were originally created in the software. You may ask, where does that data reside before it's pulled into either of the design tools? Let me explain. When the data is pushed from SOLIDWORKS PCB via a flyout panel to SOLIDWORKS, it goes into a storage location we call the Collaboration Vault. The vault is installed on your internal server and allows for parasolid data to be retrieved when enabling the SOLIDWORKS PCB add-in. If you have Altium Designer tools currently, we have something for you too. It's called PCB Connect. It is the exact same MCAT ECAT integration between the tools, but instead of being built into Altium Designer, it is an extension. From the SolidWorks side, it is a SolidWorks add-in. If you have the purchase Altium Vault, you can link directly to that instead of having to install the collaboration vault we spoke about a few moments ago. It has the same look and function as in the SolidWorks PCB tools. Let's take a quick tour so you can see for yourself how it really works. I have opened my SOLIDWORKS tools and under the tools and add-ins, you'll notice there is another add-in called Altium PCB Works Collaboration. When this is enabled, you'll see uh, the panel on the right hand side in your task pane um, and it allows you for the push and pull buttons from the collaboration server. And with that, that allows you to bring in that data from the SOLIDWORKS side. I'll also launch my PCB Works tools and once I do that, you'll notice when it opens up, uh, it will allow for you to create your schematics, your PCB, your libraries, um, any of your manufacturing or fabrication data right within the SOLIDWORKS PCB tools. And here you can see up at the top, the ribbon is enabled um, with all of the commands. And as I change between the schematic and the PCB, you'll notice those menu items change along with it. And once that's loaded, you also see on the right hand side, the collaboration panel. And this allows me to go ahead and push those changes from SOLIDWORKS to the SOLIDWORKS PCB and vice versa. And you'll notice from the view pane, I can enable or disable that right from the SOLIDWORKS collaboration icon at the top. As I go into the preferences, there is the collaboration vault that is installed when you install SOLIDWORKS PCB for the very first time. This is where that data is, is saved off to in a parasolid format so it can be used between both of the applications. If I go into 3D mode, you'll notice the models have already been attached to the libraries and it's as if the board would be going out to fabrication and being assembled. At this point in time, I can push that initial design over to SOLIDWORKS and I'm going to make a comment and post that. So initial board outline, I'm going to post that to the collaboration server. And once that's done, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up my SOLIDWORKS tools. And at this point in time, I can pull in that exact same project file. And once I've done that, click OK, it will ask me to save off that assembly. And I can do so. It's going to overwrite what is already there, which is fine. And then at this point, it's going to start 
adding those components as a solid or parasolid file format um, and start building that assembly for me along with that board outline. And this takes a couple of seconds to, to really bring in that data. It's going to redraw those holes for me where they're established to make sure that they're accurate and correct um, exactly from what was sent from the ECAD side. And it's ideally you would want both your electrical libraries having the 3D models attached along with the SOLIDWORKS and the models that you have created from your mechanical engineer associated with those libraries because when it rebuilds that's where it's going to take that parasolid data from and if you have the models they'll look identical in both the electrical tool and in your mechanical tool so that's just kind of an important note if you keep those very similar and exact models in both um, it most certainly lends itself to to be viewed as the same exact board in both tools and this does and you'll notice as far as the SOLIDWORKS is concerned just like any other assembly now you'll be able to modify and make edits you know moving components changing the board outline adding cutouts as needed um, and making those main changes right in your SOLIDWORKS tools and then be able to push those back to the ECAD. For example, I'm going to go in and I'm going to edit this board outline. I'm just going to select the upper portion on both sides of the board on the left and on the right hand side and then I'm going to go in and I'm going to select my tangent arc. Once I've done that then I can recreate that board outline just by adding an, an additional space there at the top for each side and then I can go ahead and accept that change for those arcs and then rebuild it. Once the rebuild has been done for the assembly and the part file then I can go back into my panel and I'm going to push that data across and here I change the outline board outline so I'll just go ahead and type that in I'm going to post that again to the collaboration server and then in my SOLIDWORKS PCB, I can view those from the panel. Notice when I highlight that or hover over it, it highlights it and then I can accept that change as well. Because online DRC checking is enabled in the electrical tool, if I move any components, you'll notice that in bright green as well. So it lets me know ahead of time if there's any errors provided I have that online DRC enabled in my, my preferences. Once I've moved those components, then I can go ahead, go back to the collaboration panel, and I'm going to push that. And I'll just say move components so my mechanical engineer knows what I've changed. I could put in designations as well if that were important. On the SOLIDWORKS side, I'll go ahead, open up the panel. You'll notice the view changes dialog is, is there, and I can open that or click on it. And now I can select each of those changes either one by one or both together using holding down my shift key. Once I accept those changes, then as a mechanical engineer, I know that this again has, you know, those changes from the ECAD side have been brought in effectively. And I am working with the most current board design that has been pushed to the collaboration server. And maybe at this point, I want to go ahead and I want to edit, you know, that board outline and make a cutout in it, for example. I could do that as well. I can go ahead and I can click on this sketch and I'm just going to select the face and then I'm going to go select my circle tool. And then I'm going to go in, I'm going to draw that circle. Once I accept that, I'm going to go in and I'm going to extrude that cut to make sure it's through all the entire board. And at that point, because I'm in the solid part file, I want to switch back to the assembly. Once I'm in the assembly, I'm going to push that change across. I'm just going to say added cutout. And that will post to the collaboration server. And once that's done, I can go back in the ECAD side, view that change, and accept it. And now this is my final board. So we have both agreed on the mechanical and electrical side, this will be the final one. I can start generating my manufacturing outputs, such as my Gerbers, my NC drill, my pick and place files. And I can even produce a parasolid file if need be. 
I can do it as a batch mode as well, include my bill of materials, um, any of my prints that I need, my Gerber files, NC drills, um, maybe my pick and place report, and go ahead and send that off to fabrication at that point in time. In the SOLIDWORKS side, I may still need to do a few more things. Maybe I need to create a new assembly from this PCB board assembly and make sure that they're mated together. Maybe I need to do some post-checking. Maybe I need to evaluate for interference detection between my assembly of my PCB and, say for example, an enclosure that I might be mating it to. So all those checks and balances, you can continue on with the exact process that you're accustomed to using, but now you will have that physical assembly of the printed circuit board as well. And the ease of integration between your mechanical and electrical engineer. So thank you for taking a first look at our SOLIDWORKS PCB tools.